So we're back for some more to Muslim. Back in the dry Arabia. And will you look at that? Barbecue man is an appropriate name here. Playing as the Barbican sieve. It's going to be the Chinese. Get a little smile on my face whenever I see Dumu pick the sieve. It's definitely... Um, it's definitely kind of become his, one of his own kind of signature things. It's kind of interesting when you figure the Muslim is journey through Age of Empires for, you know, this guy that was infamous for his Mongols, then loved his English. But Chinese has always kind of been there. And I actually think if you look at compare play recently, like the way he's played Chinese has been pretty effective and it enables his play style because Demu's a little bit of a filthy castle lover. You know what I mean? I'm not talking about castle age. I'm talking about the other side. He loves to just castle, castle rush his opponents, drop keeps in their base. And if there's one sieve that can do that better than others, it's going to be the Chinese. Not just due to the fact that they can build faster, but it's also the fact they can collect their resources faster and also that they use these finite resources better because they're fabricating 20% more resources on these stone outcroppings. So a lot of cool elements at play there for the Chinese compared to other sieves. And we'll have to see if it does get to a keep drop stance, if that's even going to be allowed, because he's playing against a sieve that can be the tempo aggressor here. On the other side, we've got a name I'm not even going to try to pronounce, playing as the French in the fabulous pink. This person is not to be discarded as a pushover, although Dumu has two accounts in the top six, I believe it is. Uh, this person on the other side is a respectable rank 36 in the world. So should be a good fight between the two of them. We'll see how they want to open up. Always curious with the, the configuration to like tech up towards Feudal Age here. So obviously you want to get free pool and gold to get optimal gathering rates after having eight up on food. And then the thing I'm looking for is whether in the build up of School of Cavalry, he drops the, wimp, the mill and starts researching Wheelbarrow. I really like the mill in Wheelbarrow kind of configuration. Um, with the cost of wheelbarrow, it will require you to go onto a straggler tree unless you prioritize the lumber camp, though. We'll see if he wants to go that way. Actually, up to four and gold, so definitely going to have a healthy amount in reserve. Looks like timing overall should be good. On the other side, the Muslim is now quickly hopping across on the gold. Notice that typically the Chinese are more delayed on hopping onto gold because... One, optimizing for the fastest possible feudal timing isn't as important for them as the, the French because the French won't get the first night out. Two, what is more important is getting this guy out, the Imperial official. You have to pay, of course, 100 food, 50 gold for that, and you'll want to supervise on the mill. And the other thing you have to keep in mind is that unlike the French, the Chinese do have to go onto wood sooner because what allows the French player to optimize for this timing is that they're only paying 25 wood for these drop-off points while the Chinese are paying the full 50 wood like every other sieve. So that actually adds up a lot. It burns all your starting wood, and it means you have to go for a lumber camp faster. School of Cavalry is underway. Only three villagers working on it. Mill is coming in now. The timing should line up pretty damn well for him to finish Wheelbarrow about at the start a few age with this tech up timing. So around four and a half, four fifty should be complete. There you go. We'll bound away. Beautiful thing there. Only 35 wood, but don't get baited, folks. You can't just immediately rush mill plus mining camp plus house because you'll use all your wood and you won't actually have enough for wheelbarrow as well. So you have to calibrate that correctly. That's why you need to be on the lumber a little bit. Meanwhile, the other side, Barbican is going to be dropped on the fort. Good choice here by the Muslim. Secures the gold and the stone. He actually got a very generous spawn for this detail. His backside is still going to be exposed, so the berry sheep point could be raided. But the good news about being the Chinese up against the French is that the French don't want to dive you. More so than pretty much any other sieve. The two worst sieves for the French to actually come up against for dive potential are, are the Chinese and English. Because the English, of course, have double TC RFR. And then the Chinese have hand cannon slits. And why hand cannon slits are very important is... When you go up against normal TCs with these knights, these knights have free ranged armor. Almost 50% of the damage is being mitigated that's coming to you from Arafar from town centers. When you're up against the Chinese, that free ranged armor doesn't actually account for much against the 25 damage hand cannon slit, which there's two of here because there'll be a barbican as well. Like you're not actually not even taking away 20% of the damage coming your way. It's incredibly frustrating to play French against the Chinese for this reason. Lu Chat is getting on board with the idea that, yes, this backside is indeed very exposed. 
Um, there is even a sliver point that you can optimize to move through as the French player here, where I don't think you maybe get hit by the hand can slits if you go by this tree line. So you can shortcut to the backside. But it's, it's a very condensed backside. It's very hard to assault. Another thing that I think really helped the Chinese and made them better against the French is the buffs to Village a while back, where they decrease the point where you can get it to age one. The reason this is a big deal is not only is it actually more optimal to build a village versus houses, right? Because ultimately you're saving uh, 75 wood overall, right? But it's a garrison point. It means you've got less exposed eco because uh, you have to imagine this like an outpost. For early game against French cavalry raids, this is an outpost. You know, it, against an all-in ram rush, yeah, this is not an outpost, right? Because it's not going to defend, it's not going to attack them back, but it's going to stop them from attacking you. We'll see that right away. You see, he just moves in, but the garrison just comes out. He gets one strike, and that is it. And already, just look at the damage he takes in return. Half his HP is just gone. It's incredibly infuriating to deal with. Go back on the wood this time. Needs to be a little bit careful the injured villager. But not fading under the pressure, right? This is a pretty comfortable start. He's already got the second Imperial official. He's working on the stone. You can definitely start to feel the French players a little bit on the clock, and the only thing you can really do is try to go for his own TCs, and he's already going to be on his way towards it. He needs to finish off the wood first, and then he'll have what he needs. In fact, looking at 11 people in wood, should actually line, line up pretty well here. Knight and Archer, that's a cool switch up coming out from the French player. I didn't even notice that detail. You don't usually see the archery range this fast, especially against the Chinese, but it's a crafty one. Not the worst of ideas either. You need to do any damage you can as quickly as possible because you have to remember the Chinese are already escalating their eco count even compared to the French because Song Dynasty is online. And yes, Mist is getting on board with the idea that the Chinese are here. I'm going to take credit for that when he wins Wallow because the Chinese is because I told him about Imperial Palace. <laughs> Probably not going to see Imp Palace this game. Villages. <laughs> they even get the shivs out. I mean, that's a dead knight. And the archer needs to be careful as well because he's being baited in range. Love the way that Demos is skirting this small thin tree line because there's a there's a vision gap here on these three trees. So if he moves right and left, these archers are going to get baited underneath TC fire. And ultimately, that's just going to offset any threat to you. And you can see that there is no intent to build many more knights here. In fact, there is an intent to get even more TCs coming up from French player. Cool idea considering you know the Chinese player is going to be going secondary TC. That does put the Chinese at essentially free TC effective. So if you want to combat that and exceed that actually, because remember the French have a slightly better uh, build time on the villagers, you need to go up to free. Meanwhile, this one bloody archer. <laughs> it's time to beat his ass, boys. Get him. Get him! Shiv's out! <laughs> Don't worry, a replacement's on the way for this poor guy. I mean, it's still idle time, but ultimately you can't stop this indefinitely. TC is going to be dropped here. There's a few villagers have to waste a lot of time chasing away, but the Muslim content to make that sacrifice so he doesn't have to go into an archery range as quickly. In fact, if anything, he could try to flirt with the idea of stables instead. Might be a better option, especially now that his opponent's gone for free TCs. And yes, Mister is correct. It is 3.2 TCs. It's kind of weird, like when you think of like how maths works in your brain, you read 35% and you wouldn't think it would put the Chinese at essentially 3 TCs, but it really does. It's kind of absurd. <laughs> Get him, boys. So, Wurvara is already taken. This isn't too inefficient for the Muslim to be doing. I... Don't think Ben knows about the third TC yet. He's been scouting about, but I don't think he checked the stone outcropping recently. He should now get the heads up about it, so he knows he's now up against three, uh, three plus TC effective French. 3.2 would be specific. But the Chinese are still competitive, right? Because the thing you have to keep in mind is that while the French are matching your, your production rates in terms of villages, they can't match your gathering rates because of the extra 20% you get from the Imperial officials. Imperial official count is now up to three, so you're pretty much covering everything you need. You can see he's gathering tax, he's covering the wood, he's covering the food. I don't expect a Muslim to go for a third TC. I think that's too greedy. I actually prefer this choice being made here. He'll get a few spears to guard, and I think he'll try to rush towards Castle Age and go Palace Guard. Palace Guard can punish the crap out of a French player for spreading this fin. Okay, this is like taking a tiny knob of butter and trying to make it good for the entire loaf. Because if you look at the food that he has access to, the deer's already almost half done. He only secured his initial wood line with the, second, uh, the third TC over here. 
decent amount of golden reserve, yes, but the food is going to be the big issue. You're either going to have to go for farms, or you have to play out into more pocket ecos. And even if you go farms, you haven't really secured this forward wood line with a CC placement. Like in an ideal world, I think the French player would have liked to have had a gold vein down here and then dropped a TC on the south side. That way you'd have two wood lines to work with. Speed of wood lines. This one's getting a little bit saturated. Night gets the bad news though that spears are now in play for the Muslim. And this should be the point where he just rushes a tech up. He's amassing more spears, but when he sees no moon and no new knights coming, this should be the point where he's like, okay, I don't need to actually like double down anymore. The castle age should be more feasible. Oh, for now the archer's gonna be falling in the side. Spears are gonna be able to overwhelm though. I think this is kind of skimping going on from Pink, right? Like he doesn't want to invest into too many long, uh, in too many archers early on, and it means that you haven't got enough to necessarily scare the Muslim spears away. You will eventually get the count. It's just every time that you fail to bring enough archers initially, like you're slowing down your timing. You're giving more opportunities to react, and the Muslim can make two choices: he either takes a little bit of pressure and goes cast Lage, or he now addresses everything here. And I like this choice to go Horseman. This is going to destroy all map control for the French player. And if there's one thing you don't want to have happening at this stage in the game, it's going to be loss of map control because you know these resources that you secure with the TC are being exhausted very fast. Horseman now on the field. Just enough to deter the archers. Needs to be careful about clashing here up against the knights, though. We'll lose one of the horses. Couldn't body block either. Spears are going to make their way in, though. Whoopsie, that's a trade you take every day of the week. And continue ways across. I wouldn't be surprised if we see maybe a blacksmith's into, say, a, a ram play here. But I think instead he's just going to try to focus on mid map control and now find his way up. The Chinese can actually turn feudal into a strong point in their the game plan. I just think long term it's not a great solution against the French specifically. There are other civs that actually feudal end game is really good for the Chinese. And that's usually civs that do lightly armored units because of Chugenu. But if you're up against heavy cavalry, that, that demeans your ability to play Chugenu as an advantageous unit. You can see exactly why there's a lot more posturing going on here. I love what Dimusum done in the end. He takes mid map and then he pulls back. Because what he's now forced is a double down by the French player into feudal units. And it allows him to move towards castle. And you can see what he's doing in that prep towards castle. He's also stockpiling a lot of wood because he realizes the berry's about to run out. He wants to set up farms at the back here. It's actually a pretty smart play. There's very limited access points, especially the walls on the north side. And now he's walled to the south side as well. So the deer are going to insulate him on his timing. But he will still get into the farms regardless because there's way too much wood for him to not. This is a, a pretty good reaction. If you're the French player, you feel... Very disarmed now. You invested in more knights, went up to seven. And the difference in knight count, like the more the more you've invested, you added what, four additional in, I think it was in the end. Now he's adding even more. That could have been his castle age. Now there is at least an upside for the French player. If the castle age is delayed long enough and the knight count goes high enough, you can just tech up and then the upgrades are gonna be justified by the amount of raw knights you have that you wanna upgrade. But we're a distance away from that. And I think that the Chinese player can hit the timing faster. And with that upgrade, we'll be talking about Pascal. We could also be talking about Lancers your own that can easily just ignore the main fight and dive into one of these three different burgeoning economies the French have back at home. Right in. Just skirting it. No textiles. Spears are going to start to clash. Looks like one of the Knights does get pinched. Good maneuvering there. The horsemen are going to gap close. The archer's going to be forced to commit here. They are body blocking, by the way, intentionally so that the knights cannot be clashed with the spears. We'll look for the re-engage, but a fight that you do not want to be taking right here. I mean, the French player should just be running away. He's trying to, but it's just too difficult when the archers are this deep, right? The horsemen always raid you. They always run you down. Ideal world, the Muslim pulls back the spears. That's just not going to happen, though. Because he wants to throw away the entire army. The tech up is going to allow him to go pass guard and lancers. Spearmen and horsemen have no place in the Chinese military force anymore. However, the remaining spears will make quick work of the knights. And remember what I said about that prolonged feudal where you can make your way up as the French player and get value? That can't happen anymore. I think he lost too much. 
And while you can argue eventually you could still come up with that value, right? You go up to 15, 20, and you, you, you go forward with the, the castle age. Think about the difference in timing now to get back up to that, that number of raw military power. What it's going to do to you. And the other thing is he keeps getting baited into taking fights like this because he sees the Muslim playing pocket egos again. The weird part is the Muslim hasn't any need for this. He doesn't need to be out here in these dangerous areas at all. Like, he's just being incredibly greedy. If he wanted, he could just set up all the farms now. He's still got over a thousand wood in reserve, but it almost feels like the Muslim's intentionally doing this to A, get better gathering rates in the meantime, but B, force the French player to keep playing feudal. <laughs> so, if intended, this is really, really crafty. Neck and neck on the eco still. But the age up really is the difference here. Nesta B is now hitting the field for the Muslim. More spears. Decides he doesn't need the power guard, doesn't need the lancers. Would still love to see lancers added in. And looks like we are going to get our wish come true here. Actually, the power guard also being added to the retinue. And he can afford this. Like, look at his income. His income is absurd. He's got double the amount of food coming in. And keep in mind that he's already more or less insulated on the farms. That hasn't happened on the French side yet. They're still playing on berries and deer. So that uncomfortable phase has yet to arrive for pink. But it will be coming in probably the next four to five minutes. They're going to offset it a little bit with this ball play. But this is just going to show the desperation. Like, I think one of the big risks when you make a ball play in an even game like this is it tells your opponent what the state of your economy is. So now, without even scouting your base, which you can see the Muslim has no vision outside of his own base, he can easily discover that you are desperate in terms of food source. Uh oh. Knights, Knights, the Muslim? Where are the walls? Okay, he's going to get out of the farm in time. However, he's not going to get off the deer stacks in time. Mistakes most definitely made there. Demu was so busy guarding the food that, remember, he really didn't need. He could have just paid for more farms. That he allowed the French player to wiggle his way in and also wiggle his way up. Castlate is achieved. However, villagers, their sacrifices are kept to a minimum. The walls will get him out safely. Spears will now also cut off the French player. Moving across a little bit too slow here for maximum impact. So he won't be able to kill off any additional knights. And that's very important because Pink wants to get the upgrades in place before even thinking about taking a clash. And looks like it was the Royal Institute. We are going to see Royal Bloodlines already prepped. I think this is a bit early for it. You're only at 10 knights, actually. Usually you want to be up to 15 to 20. I think that's when Royal Bloodlines really pays for itself. And also, he's prioritized going Bloodlines over Cantered Saddles. I just think Cantered Saddles offers up a lot more initially at this phase than what Bloodlines is going to give you. Because the idea is you don't want to be taking a full-on clash where you smash non-stop. At this stage, considering the configurations, the French player's best and most ideal situation is a charge cycle in, two to three seconds skirmish, and then pull. Damn it. He's close to pop cap. This is about to get really spooky. With his income, with the rates that he's able to achieve, he could easily just dream of, about Imperial Age here. And it wouldn't take him very long either. Monks at least get spotted out. Keep dropping the center. Oh, no, 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 no. This might not be the move, though. He sees it now. He moves just in range. Nestabees are on the way. Flank attack coming in. But the Knights will have to commit. And they'll probably be committing to their death. Spearman and Pascal move across to block this out. Nestabees will move in to try and push the villagers back, as well as the archers that are being swarmed. Nestabees should be sacrificed, but the price is going to be high for French. Oh, good lord. Pink's in trouble, man. I mean, this keep isn't going up. This keep is not going to go up. There's just too little. So close yet so far. Secondary pull is also going to be a big fat fail. Even if he completes the keep, it's going to cost him several more villagers. Just look at it. The Muslim knows as well. He commits like a swarm. Much for a bunch of them. Garrison's just in time, but two more go down before they get inside. And that's a heavy hit to the eco. All of a sudden, the Muslim is now 20 villagers up and over. And still, he's the one with a standing army. Ping has been reduced to nothing. And he can just dive past this. He doesn't have to worry about the keep anymore. It looks like he's going to commit, start burning it down with the pass guard. A little bit ambitious. It's going to take a while. But the reason he does this is the Muslim is close to pop cap. He doesn't care if he has to lose 20 troops taking this down. It's worthwhile because it's going to be six more villagers dead. A ball which cannot be secured for the French player. 
and 800 valuable stone down the drain. And all these walls, it counts for nothing. So much time taken to try and secure the flanks. The flanks don't matter. And it's even better this way now for the Muslim because it means he can optimize. His slower moving units can get to the fight quickest because they just go down the center. Another key drop on the side. This one should at least go up as it's not going to be revealed quick enough. But still, another eco hit. Dives continue. Pink, Pink is beginning to plummet. It's almost a 30 villager lead now for the Muslim. A keep of his own in the center. He'll happily take the boar away. Might even turn this into a proxy base. More Nesta Bs now on the front line also. And I'm struggling to see a road to recovery now because this is going to be difficult to get the production going fast enough. Especially with this issue. Military Academy had actually not been started yet. Meanwhile, the Muslim, I'm pretty sure he got Military Academy a while back, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And that's why his production rates are so good. He can maintain more or less pop cap indefinitely. And more so than that, he's going to be able to tech up. It's, the reason he's able to tech up, by the way, is as it stands, Pink can't take good fights. Like, what is a, what are a good fight? How does that exist? Where does that exist? They don't. They're mythological right now. I'm in the academy almost done, but... Pink far away from having a sustainable force to defend with. Like the other issue is you're relying on Arbor Trier up against Nesta Bees. If anything, he needs to pivot into a workshop and get Spring Orbs, but this is one of the hardest sieves in the game to reactionary anti-siege. There's not many sieves that struggle as much as the French. French and English actually are two of the, the hardest ones to switch over into siege. And I'll give the English to it better because they get the attack speed buff and also their keeps can be siege workshops, but. Luckily, actually, you don't need anti-siege when the Muslim's busy reading out sub donations in his chat. He didn't even notice. He might not care, though, because he is underway with the imp page. That's almost complete now. There it is. Tech is going to tick in. And all of a sudden, some urgency is going to kick in for Pink. He needs to do some serious damage here. He needs to find some raid locations, but might struggle to do so. It is going to be a spirit way play. So the Muslim does have flexibility down the line. You can think actually about going towards Chicken New. Probably not in this game because he's just up against French, but you could go into something like the Fire Lancers. That would be a very easy way of winning this game down the line. But for now, he's going to keep it standardized. Nothing too out of the, the ballpark of expectation. Palace Guard plus Hand Cannoneers will give him exactly what he needs to win this game. The pressure is now on Pink. Pink needs to find... Breach points. He needs to get into the economy and stagnate the Muslim on the backside because while the hand cannon in mass is strong, it has to get there first. The production speed is slow and the price is high. 120 food, 120 gold. However, as it stands, the Muslim, I could easily see him being up at 12 to 15 hand cannoneers before impactful raids occur from Pink. Because small groups of knights like that just aren't going to cut it. I mean, you kill what, five or six villagers? At this stage, it actually isn't putting a dent in the Chinese. I mean, if anything, you're just freeing up Popcat for them to invest in military instead. Especially when you consider you've got six villagers idle costing you over here repairing this keep the entire time. Small details like this definitely go the mile. Rams now constructed by Pink. Trev is giving him a bit of a pickle. Army making their way to the front line. Siege is going to be lost. Pass guard now diving in. Need to be respectful of the Arbor Trier, though. However, the hand cannoneers are going to be sacrificed. He needs to regroup. It's going to take a little bit of time to do so. So maybe Pink getting the breathing room required. An opportunity now to breach out. Keep's going to be the target. It's going to take a while to get down, though. Luckily for him, no bullying all on board, however. Hand cannoneers are going to start pushing back. Small quantities, though. The Arbor Trier should still win this fight, but price might be high along the way. Especially considering that the Muslim can afford the pass guard indefinitely. Now I'm actually more concerned about what comes next because I think Nesta Bees are being pumped again by the Muslim. If they reach this fight, the Arbor Trier mass is just going to flop. And it looks like he sees the opportunity to go for the main target. This is what he needs to do. If the Rams are gone, the keep stands, and the Muslim can stabilize again. And that's why he just throws away the troops this. A good trade, actually, for Ben. Yes, it costs him more on a resource base, but that's not what matters. Pink. 
needs more. And he needs it fast. It's going to be more reliance on Arbor the Trio, but that means that the Nestabees remain unanswered. And with the amount of spears now in play for the Muslim, that flank, which we saw before, where three knights took out two Nestabees freely, I don't think that's going to be happening anymore. It's going to be a lot tighter of a format for the Muslim moving in. And it means Pink has to take a direct fight and win. So, in an ideal world, if you had the opportunity to tech up, you could get Reboldequins, you'd have a great answer to Spears. But the issue for Pink is they're nowhere near Popcap, and they're actually not that close to having Imp. And if they go for Imp, in this sort of position, they're going to lose the game. So they have to take probably two good fights to then reach into Popcap, and then make their way to Imperial Age. Anything else, I think, is just losing the game. Lose something here. Villagers on the wood line. A little bit of trouble. Nestebees actually targets them down. The bullying continues onto the trebuchet. It's a pricey investment that's just going to be lost, and the spears continue to push back. Hand cannon is also not being targeted here by Pink, which means that more damage is actually being done in favor of the Muslim. Even taking out the knights that failed to clash straight away, and they can't get the Nestebees. The Nestebees is actually going to survive here. Arbor the Trier will continue to be pushed back. Spin Mass joins in on the main fight, and this is looking like a wash. Pink has no easy way back in, and now with also the gold being stripped away on the flanks, longevity is being taken away from the French. They can't stay in this game without gold. And I think the Muslim knows that all too well. He will peel back for the time being, show some respect to the keep, but I think this is just the beginning of the, the downfall now. Bombards are in the field, and that's the thing that's been missing. These keeps are really the only reason why Pink looks even remotely competitive right now, but those keeps aren't going to last long anymore. Speaking of keeps, the Muslim a little bit ambitious this one. But, yeah, once again, looking at this game, I, I think it does come back to the whole issue that at no stage in the last several minutes has Pink been able to raid, which means you haven't slowed down the Chinese in any way. I think it's also tough to raid the Chinese sufficiently at this stage in the game anyway. When they're close to pop cap in terms of what they want for villages, their ability to replace is very powerful due to the fact there are three TCs here, which is two. So it's, it's very difficult for you to do enough damage unless you have you know, 10 to 15 knights diving in and spreading out on the farms and killing 20 plus villages. Four or five knights just isn't going to cut it. And if you think about the last several minutes, when was the last time you saw the French player with 20 plus knights? I don't think there's actually been a single point in this game where Pink has had more than 15 knights. And this red pass screams of desperation. Screams of death. We said he needed Imperial Age. He still wasn't pop cap though. And that's never going up. I mean, he's also going to lose a lot of resources when he cancels it. That's it. There's no way back. I, I just don't see it anymore. GG's going to get called. Demu handled the French aggression well early. Baited them into prolonged feudal. Came out ahead in the late game as the Chinese often do. It's a great place.